Hey, what's up my friends? Welcome to the live stream. Uh, it's time for another exciting episode of Measuring Dev Skills with Code Signal. You're here with your friend Pat, and you might be thinking, hey, this looks familiar. I feel like we've seen this before. And yeah, you're not wrong. This was actually the same as the last task that we were looking at. So uh, we looked at this one last week to sort of demonstrate this idea of a file system task, the idea that we can have like a, a whole tree of files that we can work with, not unlike a web app. And, and we can sort of extend uh, this file tree. We can add new files, we can subtract files. So we can use that however we want in terms of organizing our code. But the main thing I want to zoom in on this week, because we didn't really get as much of a chance to go through this last time, is the idea that even the tests are within this file system over here. So, I mean, if we're just a regular candidate, we're not going to be able to, to view these. Well, we're not going to be able to view this one. We're not going to be able to modify this one. Uh, and that's just a way of sort of cutting down on the possibility of, of cheating or, or something like that, you know. Uh, like a, a fraudulent submission sort of thing. So we don't want the candidates to be able to see all of the tests. Uh, but the main thing I wanna talk about is how the tests are number one, a lot more flexible than what we're used to in just sort of like the input output or input expected output format that we're traditionally used to. So these are more flexible than that, but also I would make the claim that these more closely resemble the way we would actually write tests if we were working on an app or something like that. So the first thing to notice about this is we're in Python and we're just doing import unit tests. Again, very much not unlike the way we would actually uh, go through and if we were building an app or working on an app, uh, then we, want, we would want to be building tests like this, things that sort of test the functionality of what our app is supposed to do, right? So in this case, we're working with a matrix. Uh, specifically, we wanted to be able to do, well, all of the things in the description over here. So we wanna be able to tell if it's a vector, we wanna transpose it, we wanna scale it up, etc. cetera, right? Uh, so basically what we'll do is, might as well run the test as it says right there, right? And we'll see what kind of feedback we're getting. So right off the bat, I mean, some of this stuff is left over from last time. We had sort of already written some of this stuff out. Um, so this isn't like the uh, boilerplate code that, that we're provided with. We have built this out a bit, which is why we're passing four out of the six sample tests. So if we're passing the test, great. You know, we get the little check mark over here, no problem. Uh, it doesn't really have much to say aside from the fact that we completed that part. It's working as it's intended to work, or at least it's working as well as the basic tests expect it to work. There might be something in the advanced tests that tests for something a little more uh, advanced. So like, for example, maybe we could get away with just making a, a two by two identity, right? So like our, our identity matrix right now, we're producing something that's of the size that the user asks for. But if we decided to just return a two by two identity instead, then we would probably still pass our basic test over here, but not the advanced test. Anyway, the point is, so right now we're passing most of the basic tests, uh, but there are a couple that we're not. So let's zoom in on this one over here, test scale. Notice the kind of feedback we're getting, again, very similar to what we would expect if we were actually working on an app, right? Uh, so number one, right off the bat, it tells us where we can find this, right? So in basic test, line 33, that's where things are going wrong. And if we look at line 33, it's within test scale. Makes sense, right? Test scale, that's the one we're failing. Um, and if we look at this, we're basically given like an original matrix, we're trying to scale up that matrix and compare it to sort of the scaled up version of it. So this is really nice because, I mean, because we're using our unit test library here, we're taking advantage of its natural features. So like being able to give us this nice error reporting uh, stuff over here, right? Telling us exactly what's wrong with this thing. So basically saying, well, this thing over here, it's not looking very much like this thing over here. So let's see if we can fix this one and then we'll, we'll sort of move on from there. So right now, yeah, no surprise that the scale thing isn't really working. I mean, <laughs> we're not really doing anything. We're basically just returning the itself, right? So what we should do is actually modify the matrix. So self.matrix is gonna be assigned the value of, and we'll just do a quick list comprehension in here. We'll say num, uh, num times scalar, I guess, for num in row, and then all of this is for row in self.matrix, 
Okay, so basically making a new matrix that's just whatever the number was in the row times whatever scalar we're being provided over here. So let's see what happens if we run this. I'm using control R to run the test down here. Nice little quality of life feature. And there we go. Test scale is totally fine now. No problems there. Cool. Nice stuff. So what's actually happening when we do this? Well, basically it's taking all of our code, all of the files, it zips them. It sends it over to our code runner server, which is a dedicated server just for running this kind of stuff without any kind of noise or interference, without having to worry about the limitations of bandwidth or processor speed or anything like that. Uh, it's, it's building and executing all of this stuff, and then it's reporting back with its findings. And again, I mean, we're using the kinds of tools that we would normally see in sort of the app development of this kind of stuff. So not only in terms of like how the task is laid out, but also in terms of the test, this is meant to very, very closely resemble uh, the actual uh, responsibilities of a, of a real dev kind of thing. So basically, again, this is meant to make sure that the interview questions we give, even in this automated format, can closely resemble the actual responsibilities of the job. Now, this is a Python one, which is why we're using like the Python unit test library over here. But if we wanted to use a different language, then uh, this would be built out with, you know, the appropriate tools for that language. So for example, if we we're using JavaScript, we might use something like um, Chai or Mocha or some other unit test um, tool. Anyway, that's, I think, about all I have to say uh, about the unit tests for this type of task. So again, I mean, we get a lot of nice data here. Oh, actually, sorry, that, that was one last thing I wanted to mention. This kind of data is useful, not only because it provides the candidate with feedback in the form that they would probably expect it if they're used to working on apps and this kind of thing, uh, but also it gives us the recruiter some really useful information about uh, how the candidate, how the user engaged with the task, what parts they were able to do, what parts they weren't able to do, et cetera. So, Basically, it's win-win, right? We get good feedback and, uh, and they get good feedback. That's basically the idea. All right, thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you again next week where we'll have a, a fresh new type of task. See you then.